Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a website called gmathacks.com. And what I want to look at today is one of the practice questions in the official guide for GMAT review, the 12th edition. And this question is from the data sufficiency section of the diagnostic test. You'll find it on page 26 if you want to read along with us in the book. Uh, I've got most of the information on the board here, so let's jump in. We're looking at question number 39. It's one of the tougher questions in the diagnostic exam, and it's one that I get asked about pretty frequently. So I wanted to take the time now and, and give everybody a good explanation to how to work through this question. So the information we're given is we're in the XY plane, so we're going to be looking at some coordinate geometry, and there's a line K, it has a negative slope. First thing, this is something that if you don't already understand it intuitively, you should spend a little more time on. It's very important to have just a good working understanding of how slopes work. So a negative slope is one that's going in this general direction. As it moves to the right, it's going down. That's the definition of a negative slope. It's going down as it moves to the right. So we know that K is a line that moves in that general direction. We know that it passes through the point negative five R. Now, that's not giving us very much information. All it means is that at negative five, let's say that's right here, it passes through that dotted line somewhere. Well, that's not much information because virtually every line passes through negative five somewhere, unless it's a completely vertical line. So we might be able to use that eventually, but knowing that it passes through there somewhere really doesn't tell us very much. So finally, the question we're looking for, is the x-intercept greater than zero? Another thing it's important to just have an intuitive grasp of is what x-intercept means. This is the x-axis, the one going horizontally through the, the grid. And the x-intercept is the point at which the line crosses the x-axis. So if there's a line that goes like this, that point right there is the x-axis, or the x-intercept rather. So if this is 10, for instance, the x-intercept is 10. We want to know where does this line pass through the x-intercept. So statement one, the slope is negative 5, the slope of line k. We already knew it was negative, but now we know it's negative 5. As I mentioned already, this is something I hope you gain an intuitive understanding of. A negative slope goes down as it moves to the right. Negative 5, that's something that will move down very sharply. This line right here, that's about a slope of minus 1, maybe a little less than minus 1, or a little greater, I'm sorry, something like minus 3 quarters. A negative 5 slope is one that's moving downhill very sharply. You don't need to know exactly the angle. That's a field that's outside of the scope of the GMAT, but it is moving down very sharply. Anything that's a number less than minus one, minus three, minus five, minus 10, whatever, that's much sharper. And the ones that are between zero and minus one, like minus one half, minus two thirds, those are the ones that are flatter. So they could be going like this, could be moving down more slowly. So in this case, we're dealing with a slope that's very sharp. So again, we don't have very much information. We don't know anything about where the line passes through minus five. So it could be something like that line. That fits the definition. It passes through minus five here, and it has a negative five slope. Or it could be that line. We'd have to go way up here to see where it passes through minus five, but it would pass through minus five somewhere. So in this case, the x-intercept is maybe minus 4. In this case, the x-intercept, let's say it's about 1. Point being, in one case it's less than 0, in one case it's greater than 0. So do we know whether the x-intercept is greater than 0? No, we don't. We just looked at an example where it's negative and an example where it's positive. So we're going to put an i right there, just to remember for ourselves that statement 1 is insufficient. Now, statement 2, r is greater than 0. This is where our one point comes in a little bit handy. So we know that it passes through minus five something. Now we know that something is positive. So for instance, that line that passes through this line where r would be negative, that line is out of bounds. We can't be talking about that one anymore. But as it turns out, we've already done all the work we need to do on this statement. Look at these two examples we came up with. In this case, the x-intercept is negative and it passes through r well, maybe at plus three or so. So r is positive. In this other example, the x-intercept is positive, and we don't know where it passes through the negative five, but it's huge. Maybe it's a hundred. So in, for this line, 
R is positive, for this line, R is positive. So it just so happens we generated those lines when we were analyzing statement one, but we just as easily could have been generating those lines given the information in statement two. So given the information that R is positive, doesn't help us much. We already know that this one, R is positive, and the x-intercept is negative. This one, R is positive, and the x-intercept is positive. So we don't know anything, really, about the x-intercept. So again, insufficient. Now we put them together. We know they're insufficient independent of each other. Are they sufficient together? We've actually already figured this out. This is a great shortcut. Since the examples we came up with that generate different answers to the question, the examples we came up with for statement one, these two lines, were the same as the examples we needed for statement two. We put them together. These two lines both have a slope of minus five. They both have an R value that's positive. So we've already put the two statements together. We just didn't know it when we first were analyzing statement one. So now we are putting them together. These two lines follow both of these rules. They're in line with the information we're given, but still x-intercept is negative. The answer is no. X-intercept is positive. The answer is yes. The answer could be either yes or no. Therefore, put them together. Insufficient. My board barely holds it, but we've got our answer. That's choice E. So, very complicated question from the outset, but a few general things to take away from this. First off, you got to have an intuitive grasp of slope. You could easily spend 30 to 60 seconds thinking of what does a minus 5 slope really mean? What does a negative slope really mean? I've watched students do that. You don't have time for that on the test. I can guarantee you you're going to have to work with slope on the GMAT. So mark it down, study that stuff, make it automatic. Also, you're going to see coordinates like that, minus 5 comma x, y comma 1, stuff like that. Virtually every line goes through every x coordinate somewhere, every y coordinate somewhere, until you get either the exact slope or you get an exact point, you really don't have much information to go on. So just glancing at this question from the beginning, you know that it's very vague. And since even though you got the exact slope, didn't give you a lot to go on, you didn't get an exact number here, didn't get a lot to go on. If you had to guess, you'd probably be leaning towards the more insufficient choices. So a lot to learn here. Not an easy question, but there's stuff you can take away and apply directly on questions that I can pretty much promise you you're going to see on the GMAT. Coordinate geometry isn't something you can just tuck away and hope won't show up on your test because I can pretty much guarantee it will. So head over to gmathacks.com or check out my YouTube channel for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.